Will Scotty Barnes have a third year leap? In this video, we're going to try to figure that out by doing a deep dive on Scotty's film from last year to both see what his current strengths are and what he can improve on going into his third season. So the best part of Barnes' game right now all lies with his physical tools. Scotty is a 6'8 wing with over 7 foot wingspan and on top of that he's also really explosive. He's really good. So that combination of size and mobility makes Barnes a really effective straight line driver. Having the ability to explode into open space and use his length to find windows to finish. On this play, notice how Durant is matched up with Barnes. And as the ball gets driven into the middle, watch how KD sinks down to stop the downhill attack. But when the ball gets kicked back out to Scotty, he's able to attack right off the catch and elbow at the rim in one dribble. Now off the dribble, Barnes doesn't have the most dynamic handle, but it is good enough to get him downhill, so he can then use his size to find ways to score. Watch how Scotty on this play pushes the ball to his right hand, then gallops up to build momentum and explode downhill. And as Barnes attacks, notice how the defense sends extra help, but from this spot, Scotty can just simply use his length to keep the ball high and find a finishing window over the defense. As a driver, Scotty is also pretty physical, calmly initiating heavy contact with his outside shoulder to find angles to score. You'll see him here make a nice in and out by curling the ball, planting his outside foot, and leaning his shoulder all at once, which shifts the defense out of his frame. Then watch how Scotty's initial dribble is out wide, but then he cuts the angle back in and again initiates contact with his outside shoulder, which moves the defense back and gives Barnes a finishing angle on his left side. Now I also think a really underrated part of Scotty's game is his touch. From 10 feet and under, Barnes has a variety of mini pull-ups and push shots that he likes to use when he's going up against length. And these shots from him almost always land soft and die at the rim. You'll see Scotty on this play attack right off the catch. But as he gets downhill, AD is just sitting in the paint waiting for him. So Barnes gets to a simple 2 foot stop and elevates up for an easy 8 foot jumper. Now we have Barnes here isolating against Jaron Jackson, who's easily one of the league's best defenders. And watch how Scotty attacks right into Jackson's chest and gives a little nudge with his forearm to create separation. Then Barnes immediately brings the ball up and shoots this hook shot right over Jaron's head. So Scotty's combination of physical strength and touch allows him to do some damage in the post. Now Barnes doesn't have magical footwork or a wide array of counters from these spots. Most of his post work comes from attacking mismatches where he can use his strength to work himself deeper towards the basket then use his size and length to rise up into buckets. Again, nothing Scotty does from these spots is super advanced but he's really good at doing the simple things right. Notice on this play how Barnes keeps the ball high, which both protects it from being stripped and also forces the man guarding him to stay vertical to avoid fouling. You'll see him again on this play bring the ball up towards his chin, which keeps it away from SGA who's reaching in help. And this again forces Giddy to play upright to avoid fouling, which again gives Barnes an open window to rise up. So in general, Scotty's post game is a little raw and he primarily goes to it when he's attacking a mismatch but he is starting to layer some footwork into his overall post bag, which would allow him to more consistently score against bigger defenders. I love this move here, where he attacks and puts his left shoulder into Robert Williams, and from this spot, watch how Scotty is going to lift his left foot up and replant it to create space into a right-left pull-up. Now the next part of Scotty's game that I want to go over is his play in transition. Obviously Barnes' physical tools translates really well to his play on the break, having good speed in the open court, as well as good body control as he's attacking. On this play you'll see Scotty catch on the break, and from here it's just him playing one on one with this defender. And notice how Barnes takes one casual dribble and puts his eyes up, as if he's going to rise up into a floater. And this causes the defender to completely lift up out of his stance, allowing Barnes to easily hit a right left euro around him. Now Scotty's also a good enough ball handler to lead the break himself, and if he can pick up a head of steam, he's an absolute nightmare for any defense. Now with the ball, Scotty's not super dynamic or shifty, but he does have really good speed in the open court when he's handling it. 
which by itself is enough to put a ton of pressure on the defense. Watch Barnes here take the ball coast to coast in just 4 seconds, and he catches the Celtics defense completely off guard, and earns himself an easy trip to the free throw line. But, this is the part of the video where we have to move on, and look at Scotty's weaknesses. So an underlying problem with Barnes' overall offensive game is that his skill set is still pretty raw. Roll! 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 Outside of using his size to attack matchups, Barnes doesn't have a whole lot of depth to his overall offensive game. Not being a reliable outside shooter, lacking the ability to consistently create off the dribble, and not having a good basketball feel. So Scotty right now is not a great outside shooter, making about 28% of his threes from last year. And to be fair, this is a part of his game that I do seem steadily improving on in the years to come. Because right now I don't see anything majorly wrong with Barnes' shooting mechanics. Having a solid base, good hand placement on the ball, and getting the rock to his pocket and set point in one smooth motion. However, Scotty's inability to consistently make outside shots has a major effect on the rest of his offensive game. Because defenders don't respect Barnes as an outside shooter, they commonly give him a big cushion when he's playing on the perimeter, which makes it much easier for them to react and contain Scotty off the dribble. Has to make a move, does so on George. Tough fall away shot. In and out. On this play, you'll see the ball get kicked out to Barnes, and notice how Horford stops his closeout well below the three, and this gives Al plenty of time and space to react to Scotty's drive, to then cut him off and force him into a really tough pull up. Barnes also has a lot of trouble with defenders who can match up with him physically and absorb contact on his drives. You'll see Barnes catch on the wing here, and notice how this defender goes under his screen. Again, not respecting Scotty as an outside shooter, but from this spot, notice how the defense is able to absorb Scotty's bump and keep him out of the deep paint. And from here, Barnes has no other counters or options in his bag, and he gets forced into a tough 12 foot push shot. And this is where I think Scotty's lack of creativity off the dribble really begins to get exposed. Now overall, I don't think Barnes is a bad ball handler, but he lacks the ability to consistently break down the defense off the bounce. Barnes, this is that fadeaway. Outside of attacking in a straight line, Barnes doesn't have any go-to moves off the dribble, and therefore he has a hard time both creating separation and creating angles to attack off the dribble which therefore leads to Barnes taking a lot of long contested twos. Now we did go over how Scotty has good touch around the basket, and with his shorter 8 to 10 foot jump shots. However, that touch doesn't carry over to Scotty's deeper mid-range looks. According to Synergy, Barnes last year shot under 38% on all his jumpers from between 12 and 17 feet. And for two point field goals, that's just not a good percentage. I think as Scotty's game begins to progress, he should primarily be a guy who plays downhill and generally does most of his damage around the basket. But in order for him to do that more, he has to become a more consistent outside shooter and add more depth to his ball handling. Now the next thing I want to go over is Scotty's basketball feel. And when I say feel, I really mean how Barnes reads and interprets the game. And this is another area where I feel like Scotty has a lot of room for growth. Barnes overall is not great at reading the floor, calmly playing with tunnel vision, and having no awareness of what's happening off the ball. You'll see Scotty on this play attack towards the baseline, and notice how he forces this big to rotate over and close off his drive. And that in return also forces this defender to rotate down and put a body on Toronto's center. From here, the right play is a skip pass to his open teammate in the corner, but Barnes instead gets into a really difficult fadeaway. Now because Scotty doesn't see the floor well, it allows the defense to send multiple bodies at him without much fear of Barnes punishing them with his playmaking. On this play, notice how this help defender lunges at Barnes. From here, Scotty should snap a pass up to Pascal Siakam at the top of the key, which would lead to a direct shot or give him a closeout to attack. But again, Barnes fails to make that read, and he turns into another difficult long two. Now in order for Scotty to improve this part of his game, it really comes down to experience. At the end of the day, Barnes has only been in the NBA for two years, and it generally takes a pretty long time for a player to develop that natural basketball feel. So let's move on and look at Scotty's defense. And I think Barnes right now is already a really good defender and he easily has the potential to one day become one of the NBA's best wing defenders. 
Now obviously Barnes' size and length makes him a pretty good rim protector, but Scotty's mobility is what I think really makes him special. Being able to pick up guards well beyond the three while having the ability to navigate through screens and contest shots. And that mobility also makes Barnes a really good defender in scrambles. Watch how Barnes on this play slides down to help on Giddy's attack. And when the ball gets kicked back out, Scotty has the ability to both scramble out to take away the shot, then drop back into his stance and force a really difficult floater. On this play, watch LaMelo turn the corner off his screen, and notice how he gets Barnes completely out of position as he snakes it back to the middle. But as ball gets into his floater, watch how Barnes is still able to recover and extend up to turn this into a really difficult shot. Now because Scotty has a 7 foot wingspan, he can guard perimeter scores with a slight cushion and still be able to use his reach to alter shots. And Barnes is also great at playing vertical to avoid shooting fouls. However, while Scotty for sure has a lot of talent defensively, his focus at times does come and go. Wait for a while to get back in the game. Like on this play, you'll see Barnes playing in help here, and when the ball gets driven into the middle, notice how his man relocates down to the corner. From this spot, Scotty should stay in his stance and backpedal to keep track of both the ball and his man. But watch how he instead rotates his hips and pretty much squares up with the baseline. And from here, he's not in the best position to recover back out and contest the shot. So overall, I think Scotty Barnes possesses a ton of natural talent. But this upcoming year, I'm sure Raptors fans are expecting some big improvements. So let me know what you guys think. Is Scotty Barnes going to make a big leap in his third season? Or is it going to be another year of development? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe for the kid. The kid's here.